This man is living on his paddleboard. The adventures he's been on are truly awe-inspiring and frankly quite hard to believe. He currently holds no less than eight world records and we met him completely by chance whilst we were at anchor here in Torbay. You see, we live on this boat and sail around the country, staying in the most beautiful anchorages which exist along this coastline, which we then upload for you all on Kadoa.com. And as amazing as the locations are we get to explore, sometimes it's the people that we get to meet who end up leaving the greatest impression, like this man, Brendan Prince. Here he comes, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Both. Yeah, you too. We've been hearing about you, Fair Party. Like everyone right, seems right. to know you. Um, <laughs> can you just tell us a little bit, Brendan? What's the mission that you are on? This you're living on this paddleboard. For where did you start? I oh, do you know what people that know me will realise. I'm always searching for the next adventure on this, on a paddleboard, because that's how I get all my publicity for water safety. I've basically seen too many people die. 700 people drowning every year is not acceptable tens of thousands of rescues. The thousands of people who have life-changing injuries because of drowning, which you never hear about, they won't make the news, but there are thousands of those, as well as the 750 that drown. And it's, you know, it's our biggest form of accident in this country. So this challenge, this is, I've done six nights, seven days. Six nights, seven. I haven't seven. got off this sodding pool. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't, haven't touched land once, wow. Um, and I've got, 20 hours left. So wow. I'm planning to do you must so be so excited. 12 tomorrow, which will be at 8 days. What are you looking forward to the most when it's finished? A sandwich. <laughs> A sandwich. <laughs> what would you say uh, ha has been the toughest part of, of this challenge? Anything unexpected? Uh, I had a seal jump on my board at 1 in the morning. No way. <laughs> and properly stuck, jumped on by my Joined you. And kind of gave me a look of, you haven't seen me. And then he tried to shimmy on. I was like, get out! <laughs> um, last night at about one, because I've got a canopy that goes. Yeah. Um, I swung around, so I broadsided the wind, which hit. It just tipped me up, kind of uh. only about 45 degrees, but enough to roll me half into the water. Oh no. And I was asleep, and, and then I lost a bit of kit, and it's clambering, you know, all those sort of things, and then you're just holding onto the shelter, and it's just like, and you're soaking wet, and you're like, it's not as fun. You hold eight world records. Yeah. That's um, just All amazing. On All on paddleboards. All on paddleboards. What, give me, can you tell me what they are? Uh, like Longest journey by stand-up paddleboards. Okay. 4,000 kilometres. Wow. Uh, only person to circumnavigate UK on a paddleboard. Wow. Um, fastest around Wales, fastest around Scotland. Fastest across the biggest lake in Northern Europe. Fastest around Ireland. Uh, first and only person to paddle lands into John O'Groke's by the coast. Wow. Um... How many is that? Fastest rain in England. Um, so yeah, all centric to That's amazing. To here, but it's given a platform to kind of now I was racing in Florida at Christmas and And, and out of all, I, I suspect I I, th I feel like I know which one was the most difficult. Maybe I'm wrong. Wh which one you tell me, which one of all of all those was, was the most testing? Uh, I think paddling around Scotland, I did it in forty three days. It's just a different world up there. I bet. You know, the waves, the, the wildlife. Um, yeah, right. It's phenomenal. What, what kind, did you see any orcas or anything like that, or any whales? Yeah, or? so I saw... Um, I got around Cape Wrath, uh -huh. which in itself, you know, is phenomenal. It's just like, this place is unreal. It should be in a film, you know. It's, <laughs> so you've got the, the, the cliffs, and um, the noise of the birds is just, you know, it's a cacophony, it really yeah. is. But they all go to sleep at about 8 o'clock. Okay. So you suddenly get this quiet. And I'm paddling. I just got, I was 10k on from Cape Wrath. And um, suddenly a boat came up behind me. And I was like, how the hell did I not hear a boat come up behind me? And what I thought was a boat was a killer whale. No way. And it literally just cruised up behind me. How, how, did that, how did that feel? The first time you saw a killer whale and you're on your paddleboard and you're on your so own. I'll put it this way. Well, the paddleboard I was on was a very different board to this right more racing board so it's still a killer whale though right <laughs> yeah i stepped stepped back and turned into it and its bear wave hit the back of my board and i fell off no and i, I fell off 14 times going around the uk wow and um that was one of them and i'm in the water as the killer whale cruised by and i don't think you can watch all the documentaries i don't think until you see 
how high that fin is at water. And there's an eye that is properly looking at you, <laughs> yeah. looking through you. Do you realise just, just how majestic and powerful this thing is? And then as it cruised by and I'm thinking, still got my legs, still got my arms. <laughs> and I'm getting back on another one, just cruised up behind me. No way. And I saw them twice more that night and you realise that they were coming at you, as in they're hunting you until they realise, oh, that's a human. So they were figuring you out. Oh, never. We always saw one first. And you thought, oh, and that would get your attention. And then suddenly, maybe boom, 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 from either side. Um, so, you know, on a boat, you've got to see them. You, uh, you will. You will definitely see them if you're ever up there. And whales. You know, was, you, there's nothing. I was coming across the Firth of Forth in fog. So following, um, following GPS. Yeah. Because I couldn't see the coast. And all of a sudden you start hearing the whale song in the fog. And oh, that wow. is like <gasps> gut-wrenchingly wow. beautiful, but gut-wrenchingly... Oh. oh, it must be. So, yeah, like you say, because like you're all there. You can't see them. Maybe they can see you. No one can see you. Do you, do you... When you're in a situation like that, when it's foggy, do you, do you have anything, like a horn or anything, to sort of at least give yeah. people... Yeah, because... Yeah, well, you know what fog's like. I do. You... you what you think could be miles away could be right on top of you or vice versa yeah and you can't see a thing um so you're constantly and i've obviously got the radios so i can straight away communicate with whoever it is find out what their course is and, and work it out from there so yeah. it's important that obviously otherwise you don't even try such things what would you do after this have you even thought about it if you're like how do you keep setting that bar when you've already uh, done so many amazing so things on a... to Silis and back in a day that's Ooh, in a day year, in a day wow so it's about 43k. I was going to say, um, it takes us what? Well, it depends where you're, you're Yeah, it depends where you're going from. So, Land's End. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, eight and one tie back on another. It's, it's quite technical to work that out yeah. at the right time of the year. So, that's that's a mission for next year, hopefully. Um, and then a few big crossings, because the idea of doing this was thinking actually, you go that way, how many days could you do? Knowing, you know, realistically, you know what the weather's like. Three days, you can pretty accurately work out three days. But beyond that, anything can happen. So of course. where could you go? Could you go from here to the far furthest point in, in France? I, I imagine, like, we'll just, there'll be a whole bunch of people watching this. And I already know what they're going to type. They're going to be like, <laughs> where do you go to the toilet? How do you go to the toilet? That's going to be the first one. They're going to be like, yeah, all right, all right. I get it, I get it. He's going to cook. I had it. Do you know what? I've, I've, <laughs> so you, I can talk to a thousand kids in a school. <laughs> And that'll be the first question. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I can talk to a, um, a highfalutin society, and that'll still. Be- <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I was just trying to put it to the back of my brain. I was yeah. trying. I was trying to sound like, yeah, it's the last thing I thought about. <laughs> so, so we just go over because that's dead yeah. easy. Yeah. Although on Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, always are busy days, so you've got to find yeah, you somewhere. Got people everywhere. Because the last thing you ever want is somebody on a headland with a big zoom going. There's the guy, and he's having a wee. Um, <laughs> So you got to find somewhere private to do it. Uh, but the poos, I keep uh, as in. You keep them? They're bagged. Oh. Yeah, just because, big advert of keeping our blue water blue. Yeah. And um, why, should, uh, why should I do it if I don't want the, the sewage companies to do it? Yeah. So, um, well, that's, that's with that. With a bag that. within a bag, within a bag, <laughs> with those in. That's quenched the curiosity that anyone else would have had, I'm sure. And obviously but. this board, you can perch on the side. Yeah without having to fall off. Worry so about falling off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pretend like you didn't think about it as well. <laughs> What's the thing, do you think, that the the people that are getting into the water are not thinking about that's causing the biggest problem? So we teach stop, look, listen, float. Okay. Those four things. We call it our blue cross code, just like the green cross code. So no matter what water you go to, whenever you get there, and there's a classic example of, you know, you just travelled from so-and-so and you've got your, you, know, you don't surf, but you've got your surfboard and you, so you're going surfing. So you don't take that moment to stop. So stop, which means you look and go, yeah, this works today. Or, oh, that looks a little bit off. Um, so I'm going to go and speak to someone. So I'm going to go and listen. It might be the lifeguards. It might be information. It might be someone coming off the water and going, how was it? So you do that stop, look and listen. You find everything out. And if it all goes horribly wrong, and this is so important because people don't know what to do in a water situation when it's all gone horribly wrong. If you, if you trained in your mind, right, I'm just gonna float on my back. Mm-hmm. 
And whilst I'm floating on my back, that's when I'm going to do my thinking of how I'm going to get out of the situation and self-rescue. But I float on my back first. Because drowning will happen, and I've seen it too many times, in seconds, whilst they're trying to figure it out. Oh, do I swim there or, or swim there? And all of a sudden they're going down. They only need that one mouthful of water and it's all going horribly wrong. So they float on their back. Get rid of that panic. They can think what they're doing. They can call for help. You know, just those four basics would save thousands of lives. You know, and, and then we train about cold water shock and rips and, and self-rescue, what to do for that or how to rescue someone else. Who to call, 999 Coast Guard, 999 Fire and Rescue. You know, all those simple things can save a life when every second counts. So the kids that you will see, my son you saw. The other yeah. Day, you know, it's not, I want them to get out there and to make the most of this amazing, what's on their doorstep, but to do it safely. To understand. So by doing this, I get loads of publicity and the BBC and the ITV are going to be there tomorrow to film it. And then Amazing. And 50 interviews after that and I can talk about water safety and the basics about that and that's what it's all about. And you say like you've been a lifeguard for 25 years, is that in the context like the RNLI is, or? So yeah, yeah, so lifeguard trainer, chairman of the local surf life saving club. Okay. Um, and from just being on the water as a surfer, as a white water kayaker, uh, and now eventually SUP, um, I've seen two, and it's not necessarily the people that drown, it's the families that it affects that you see that make a life changing, life changing. And I made a, a vow to myself on the last one that I saw that I need to do as much as I can to sort this out. Yeah. So that became a life mission. Here's a classic example. Yeah. Paddle around here, fantastic. Go 250 meters out there, very different ball game. And you're, if you're not a paddler, you don't have the technique understanding, you're just gonna try and fight it. You won't have the skills, ability to paddle against it. And all of a sudden you're going the wrong way. Yeah. And, 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 and so panic sets in. what is it that's the biggest risk that catches people out is it wind. is it the wind or the tide wind the wind wind tide let's face it there are key elements so headlands yeah. of the tide that but most people will stay within areas like this but that offshore wind so here predominantly the wind comes over the top you get caught out they get carried out so we have lots of rescues here lots of rescues in the bay lots of rescues you know it's the biggest as i say the biggest thing that's been causing the most rescue Brendan has achieved some monumental feats already and I can't help but feel he will continue to push even further in his pursuit to save lives on the water. A truly humble and inspiring person to meet and as such we'd like to do our part to help shine our little light on this man's amazing story. So please do check out his website at thelongpaddle.co.uk or check out this video here about the film that was made about this man's crazy stand-up paddle around the entire UK.